flight. I'm famous with the chicken and the biscuits. I feel like Bojangles with his grease. I be dripping. Uh, I took all the sauce out of the kitchen. I dripped on my shoes. Now them hoes really kicking. Uh, I dripped on my shoes. Now they kicking. Uh, I dripped on my shoes. Now they kicking. Uh, I took all the sauce out. The What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Avi Skinny, and today I'm here to do another installment on motherfucking WWE is racist. Um. The reason I'm doing this is because I have nothing else better to do with my life. So, you know, uh, might as well make a video on the shit. But, you know what I'm saying? I've just really been... I grew up a fan of WWE. Grew up a fan of a lot of shit. But it's just crazy to see all this shit that I'm coming across now. Alright. Um, this is Teddy Long. Y'all know the um, old... But it was the old black dude. He had the bald head. He was the... Uh, can't think of who exactly he is. He was the general manager for SmackDown at one point. But, basically, he's saying that Ric Flair, you know what I'm talking about, woo, Ric Flair was calling him a nigger. Like, it's just crazy, but, you know, we about to check it out. Chris Dobransky in Westport, Connecticut, in kayfabe commentaries, you shoot with Tony Atlas. We heard of some of the racism he dealt with in the business coming up in the business in the South, uh, I'm sorry, in the Southern-based NWA, what challenges, if any, did you face as a black man trying to make it in a dominantly white man's profession? Uh, yeah, I had my problems there. Uh, I really had most of my problems, not a whole lot, but with Ole, you know, he he he, he was a bad man. Uh, even if he knew your name, he would call you a nigga. He didn't, he just didn't care. Uh, I remember one time I was refereeing uh, one of his matches and he was in the corner. I patted him on the back. I was asked him in the bag out and he turned around and told me, nigga, don't touch me. Don't put your hands on me. In the ring? In the ring. He crazy. told me that. One time uh, I had trouble with superstar Bill Dundee. Uh, uh, Elberton, Georgia, I never forget, it was a high school gym. And something happened during the match but i was refereeing and he yelled right out in front of everybody can't you see what they're doing nigga just like that man and like the reason i, I really do these videos because i can really believe all this shit like wrestling not to sound racist but back then and still today is a white man's sport so for black people to be in it i'm sure shit was going on that we didn't know about like it, it, all this stuff we see it all WWE's fake. It's just an act. Blah blah blah. Yes, that is true. But if only y'all knew how much shit goes on behind the scenes. How many of the wrestling matches were motherfuckers was really like wrestling? Like really would get slammed a little too hard and get mad and really start fighting each other. Like it's just so much shit behind the scenes, yo. I mean, this is just unbelievable. I just kept right on going. Uh, Rick Blair walked up to me one time and asked me, he said, nigga, you like working here? And I didn't know what the deal was. And he said there was some, this was Knoxville, Tennessee. He said there were some girls at the back door and they were trying to get in. And they told him that I said that they could come in. I didn't know, I don't know who these girls are. I'm going to tell somebody to get in. I don't know who these girls are. But I mean, I think it was just a way to pick at me. And I remember Kevin Sullivan yeah. and Eddie Gilbert telling me, you know, that when they went to him to present the manager deal, you know, me being a manager, that he hated it. He had, he didn't want Ripped no, it. yeah, he hated it. He didn't want no part of it. So, uh, see, I only watched about a minute 30 to get into this interview. So like this other shit I'm about to hear is going to be new to me, but yeah, this shit just crazy. Like I've always thought about, damn, what if Ric Flair was a racist and shit? I mean, this is telling me he was, but damn, Ric Flair of all people. So if Ric Flair was a race, just imagine how many other motherfuckers like was on some racist shit. People, a lot of people would think Vince McMahon himself would be the main racist one. I guess you kind of could say that because he is like writing up scripts and shit. But as I've done my research, Vince McMahon really has not. He was not really the racist one. He just took the blame for everything. Like, because he's the face of WWE, anything that goes on is going to be looked at, oh, this Vince. But it's just so much, Jim so Murray much shit that we don't know about. My face. I was, had to go in his office. The day me and Undertaker was in there. Undertaker was having trouble with Ole. Ole said he would never draw a dime. He wouldn't do this. He wouldn't be that. So oh, Taker no, left, and are, that's when he came ages. to Vince. But yeah, that day, me and him was in that office. Jim Murray told me to my face. He said, Teddy, he said, I can just be honest with you. Ric Flair doesn't like you. So, why, I don't know. 
But uh, I was about to say, him. I'm sure he didn't come in. Teddy Long does it. I know niggas. Teddy Long doesn't seem like you know what I'm saying the the stereotypical motherfucking crime time type of nigga WWE was trying to push type shit. Like for someone, for him to be the damn ref or whatever, and then someone to be like, oh, I don't like him. Oh, he's about to be the manager. Oh hell no, I don't like like. And to not have an actual personal problem with the person, and it's that's kind of leaning towards the side of being racist, like. Talk? No matter how you want to explain uh, it. Maybe. I, you know, I mean, just for somebody to, to come up to me and say stuff to me like he did and to stop me from feeding my family, you know what I mean? I ain't bothering nobody. I'm just doing my job, trying to do what I'm supposed to do. Gary Hart, uh, since I'm going thinking about this, Gary Hart was another man came and told me. He went to Flair, and he told Flair to leave me alone. You know, why are you fucking with him? He's just doing the job, so... I, you know, I don't think it ever changed. I mean, me and him have talked since then, you know, we speak, what I mean, if he speak to me, I speak to him. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I don't say that then. I always thought that, uh, at least Gary he keep Hart it real. Soul of a black man. Well, he was a nice guy. He, he wasn't bad. He, he made me a blade one time. What I mean about that mm-hmm. is after I had that incident, you know, where he went to play, he made me something that had a little razor blade. Oh, I, shit. I mean, still had that, but he did. Oh, shit. I thought he was going to say blade as in like, a word for some, but nah, this nigga meant like he really made him a blade, like a knife, in case one of these WWE motherfuckers, steroid motherfuckers, try to do something. My nigga Teddy Long's about to cut one of these motherfuckers. And he told me, he said, these motherfuckers keep fucking with you, you cut their goddamn throat. He told me, he he made it for me and gave it to me. Daniel from Finland, are the rumors about Molina fucking around true? And were you among the lucky guys? Uh, I feel like I remember (laughs) Molina. Uh, no, I wasn't one of the lucky lucky guys, but uh, I did hear a little bit about her fucking around, but never seen any of that. Just going by what I hear. So this ain't got nothing to do with racism. Oh. The Bella Twins. Put them right there. Right in there, huh? Well, how about that? <laughs> they were like that video. Oh, oh, oh. that's how they were looking. Talking about hoes, man. Like Did you get a bit of a show? No, I, I, I just hear. Yeah, they did. I don't give a fuck about the hoes. I'm trying to see this damn race. That was going around and all that. Um, <laughs> what is wrong with you? I said that shit. What do you? T- what do you? And he, he loved that shit. Yeah, but, he, but yeah, it, I think that's the end of him talking about the racism. But it's just crazy the shit we, we as kids, we as spectators don't get to, to experience. I guess. It's just so much shit that goes on, yo. I swear. Um, but yeah, shout out to my fucking Teddy Long. Shout out also to Ric Flair. Another thing I want to say is, Ric Flair was wrestling back in the '70s, '60s era, era and shit. Vince was there. I I can like, back then, times were racist. That's why. That's why, I'm kinda. Like, I fuck with Ric Flair as a person, as a wrestler, as an entertainer. Like, that's why I'm kind of giving it a pass. But I'm not giving it a pass at the same time because it was some damn racist shit. But still, I mean, that was probably the how shit was back then. Like, shit ain't like that now. I'm pretty sure. Damn, them booty old niggas ain't getting called fucking, yeah, don't touch me, you nigga. Like, I'm pretty sure it ain't going on now. But it's just crazy the shit we didn't, didn't notice as a kid, didn't. I don't know, it's just, I'm really, like, ruining my life watching all these damn wrestling videos. Like, everything is changing. I'm thinking down, like, the Mexicos was cool and shit, then I look back on it, motherfuckers was riding lawnmowers with the damn Coronas, and it was, it's just a lot of, a lot of fucking racist shit, man. Shit's crazy. But yeah, shout out to them. Um... Let me know some more crazy shit in the motherfucking WWE, WWF, WCW, ECW, anything. Motherfucking the Chinese League, whatever. Let me know. Um, make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, all that. Till next time, YouTube. I'm out. Get along with your daddy for the pussy. Sound like we making marriage with the pussy. Hop out, jazz hands with the pussy. Skinny dance, sweatpants, dance in the pussy. I'm a smile for the pussy. Five minute man, not a while in that pussy. I go wild in that pussy. Five minute man, then I'm out of the pussy. I'm trying to grow sprout in that pussy. Somersault dive in the crowd for that pussy. Stop 
I smoke it loud for that pussy. Got me in here smoking black and mild.